Can Georgia State take down Coastal Carolina? It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz back with another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's uh, episode brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50, more than 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Guess what? Another record for our audio downloads. Thank you so much. Came home from work today and then boom, skyrocketing. So uh, that's great stuff. Again, audio downloads are you know available well, wherever you get your podcast from, but Apple Podcasts and Spotify seem to be the most prevalent. Uh, please rate and review if you're doing it on Apple. Uh, and we continue to get more and more downloads. We're getting closer to 670. I think we're going to be able to hit 700 by the end of the month. A little bit slower pace than I was hoping for, but still very thankful. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, lots to talk about today. A lot of ball games on TV, not just, you know, streaming services. Uh, and on the on the spaces with uh, Scotty Watkins from the Sun Belt, he thought maybe there could be a couple of letdown games. So we'll talk about that. They really shouldn't be, but we will talk about those as well. But the big ball game, to begin with, is the undefeated, uh, uh, first time ever, by the way, Georgia State Panthers going into Conway uh, to take on uh, Coastal Carolina. Coastal 2-1 and one, coming off a route over Duquesne. Their lone loss on the road in the Rose Bowl to uh, UCLA, obviously. All right. So the line on this game, which I just had, I saw it was six and a half. I'm pretty sure it was six and a half. Uh, I think that's a tough line. I, I, you know, it seems to be a lot for a team that's undefeated and has improved. And I'm not so sure about Coastal just yet. You know, they get the benefit of the doubt. And yes, it is six and a half. Uh, they get the benefit of the doubt because Tim Beck is a new new coach. And I really haven't seen all that much, or certainly not uh, the, since the second half of the UCLA game. Some of us may have had a little bit of coinage on that ball game, which, by the way, Coastal Carolina did cover against the UCLA Bruins. Uh, but they sort of slid by Jacksonville State. I, I think right now we're in the mode of some of these teams. Like, we don't know. Like, last week, we didn't know what LSU was. All right, so they, you know, took down Grambling. Well, now they've blown out Mississippi State. We we still don't know. Well, we kind of know what the Cajuns are. They're really good offensively, really good offensively. And two out of the three teams that they've played, uh, they've played very good defense better last week for three and a half quarters against uh, UAB. All right, we'll see what happens in a couple of weeks when Texas State comes to town. Uh, I'm not so sure about South Alabama yet, right? They've played well for a game. Maybe a game and a half, second half of the Southeastern game. So I'm not sure about them quite yet. Uh, Georgia State, on the other hand, has just gotten better. Maybe their competition is as good as people thought. I thought UConn was better. They haven't been good. Last year was a great job by Jim Moore Jr. struggling this year. And they came off a, a 10-point loss to NC State. So I thought, you know, be careful, Georgia State. And Georgia State took care of the Huskies. Uh, and then they took care of Charlotte. People were like, upset alert, upset alert. Georgia State went into Charlotte and took down, I think the 49ers, the 89ers, something like that. They took down Charlotte. And so we're waiting for that other shoe to drop with Georgia State, and it hasn't yet. Let's see statistically. I do have the stats up here. All right. Uh, scoring offense, no surprise. Texas State with their, you know, what they do is 76. They're averaging 44 points a game. App State is second with four, just over 40. And Georgia State is just over 39. They are third, okay? Coastal Carolina isn't too far uh, from there. They're averaging uh, 36 points. They just put up 66 points against a Duquesne. So kind of skewed 
a little bit, right? Because let's see here. Coastal Carolina. Yeah, they scored 13 against UCLA. They put up 30 against Jacksonville State and 66 against Duquesne. So a little skewed, probably somewhere closer to the 30 mark uh, than the 66 mark. So, you know, after 13 points, you know, against UCLA, uh, they were in that ball game. It's 27 13. They were down by one in the midfield and it got away from them. It did. Uh, let's see. I want to go back to the stats. Let's look at the defense. So, I mean, offensively, these two teams are relatively close. Coastal Carolina's got 13 touchdowns. Georgia State's got 16 touchdowns. Coastal's got more field goals, though. Uh, to Georgia State's just two. All right. Georgia State scored 118 points. Coastal 109. So they're re relatively close when it comes to offense. Now, defense. They're also very close, though, towards the bottom of uh, the Sun Belt. I mean, that 14, 13, 12. So that Georgia State is 11th in defense, and Coastal Carolina is 10th uh, in defense. Georgia State is giving up 400 yards a game. Coastal Carolina, 385 a game. All right, and obviously, these two teams are featuring two of the better quarterbacks in the conference. I think, you know, my rankings the other day was Dar Darren Granger one. And maybe I guess I put Grayson McCall fourth. That's an early <laughs> TJ Finley's number two. Joy Aguilar was right there. I have to go back and remind myself what I did, but Grayson McCall was ahead of my guy, Carter Bradley. Um, maybe mostly on uh, reputation. Let's see here. Coastal Carolina. Gives up a lot of um, a lot of it on the ground, whereas Georgia State's defense is really good on the ground. So we'll see how that goes. They give up. Well, hold on. Total defense. I need to see this adding. Yeah, Georgia State can be passed on. Coastal Carolina can be run on. It, it's almost. It's not quite two to one. Um. But Georgia State's rush defense only given up 250 yards in three ball games, and they weren't doing very well against Rhode Island. I'm not going back to see what that was. Coastal Carolina's given up more than double that. Georgia State's almost given up a thousand yards in the air, and Coastal Carolina uh, 635. So, I mean, they're relatively close. They really are. Scoring defense is going to be almost the same. Actually, not. Georgia State's given up 24 points a game. I'm sorry. 24 points a game. Coastal Carolina's only given up 16 points a game. Again, a little skewed playing Duquesne. But, you know, Georgia State played Rhode Island, and they couldn't stop Bupkis in that ball game. Some of us may have had money on that one for Georgia State to cover. But they are 3-0, and and they have gotten better each and every week. And as we'll talk about a little bit later on with all the games on TV, this is good. This is the game. This is the game on national TV on ESPN. It is a 7:30 p.m. prime time game, 7:30 p.m. Eastern time, 6:30 Central time, and it's going to feature two of the better quarterbacks in the conference. I may take the over. What is the over in this one? Those defenses don't look so great. Over under is 62. That's looking pretty good. I mean, Georgia State hasn't scored. Have they scored less than 30? <laughs> Coastal Carolina's got a relatively good defense, but again, that may be skewed. Georgia State scored 42, 35, and 41. Now, I would be looking at the over, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, it is prime time tonight. That's why we're previewing this one, you know, a day earlier because we wanted to get it in uh, prior to uh, the action on Saturday and previewing our games on Friday. Uh, but it should be a great ball game. Darren, I mean, everybody knows in the country, generally Coastal Carolina and uh, Grayson McCall, three-time Sunbelt player of the year and undefeated a few years ago, right? The COVID year. And they don't really know Georgia State. Sunbelt knows Georgia State. There's not a whole lot of guys out there that, you know, a lot of people who know about Darren Granger. This is going to be his introduction to the country. And if he pulls off the upset, uh, he's really going to be introduced uh, to the country. So 
Uh, I'm going to pick Georgia State to cover. I think Coastal Carolina wins this ball game in Conway, but I'll certainly be watching. Uh, we'll have a quick recap tomorrow night and uh, and do more of a full recap for Friday's episode, and then we'll preview the rest of the Sunday. All right, let's take a timeout. Uh, when we come back, we mentioned the game was on ESPN National. I think there's like three or four more ball games that are actually on network TV, cable TV. Uh, and that's really impressive for the Sun Belt here because this is this this weekend has a ton of great matchups, right? Colorado and Oregon and Clemson playing Florida State. I mean, there's some great ball games this weekend. And the Sun Belt is right in the middle of it, to be honest with you. All right, let's see. It is time to uh, tell you about Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught by surprise. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, in addition to the Georgia State and Coastal Carolina ball game on national TV on Thursday night. Let's see what else we got going here. Troy in Western Kentucky on ESPNU first thing on Saturday. And that's nice. Right after game day, although obviously game day is on ESPN, but Troy getting some national love. And that's not going to be an easy ball game. Austin Reed and company can light up the scoreboard. Troy. I uh, got TJ Jackson back last week, and maybe that's why they played a little bit better defense. But Western Kentucky and, and Austin Reed can sling it seven touchdowns, only one interception. Uh, my guy, Rocky Boyman, on the call in that ballgame. Uh, at the same time, you got Virginia Tech going into Marshall. Uh, and again, good for Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, still, you know, they're down. You know, Virginia Tech's not very good. You know, they may have been able to get out of this if they wanted to, but they didn't. And they're going to go mark, go to uh, Huntington and play. Game is sold out. Line has gone down to five, which is a little bit interesting. Started at seven, but it's now down to five. They're on the deuce. So you got Thursday night, Georgia State and Coastal Carolina on ESPN. Western Kentucky and Troy at 11 on ESPNU. And Virginia Tech and Marshall on ESPN2 at 11. Unfortunately, those are on at the same time. But, you know, at the Schultz Bar and Grill, we'll be able to watch uh, both of them, Cajuns and LSU, or later. Have to find out what time my Orange are playing probably early, as the case uh, may be. And then App State going out to Wyoming, and they're going to be on the CBS Sports Network. Now, you'll be able to watch App State on cable uh, as well. So that's four games. Not having to stream. That's pretty good. And one solo ball game. Is that, let me see, is that the only game on tomorrow night? That I mean, that's it, right? Let me see. There's usually more than one, right? No, that's it. You got some games on Friday. And my Syracuse are on uh, Saturday, Saturday at noon, of course. Uh, but that is the only ball game. There's no other college football game on Thursday night. There's the NFL, obviously, but no other college football game on, and it's going to be outstanding. Can Coastal Carolina shut down uh, the Georgia State offense? And again, does Darren Granger introduce himself to the uh, national audience? I think it's it's going to be a great opportunity uh, for Georgia State. Six and a half points spread again. I'm taking Georgia State to cover Coastal Carolina to win. Uh, and then, as we mentioned, uh, the other ball games, 
Western Kentucky and Troy on ESPNU. Marshall hosting Virginia Tech uh, on ESPN2. And App State and Wyoming on CBS Sports Network later on in the night. It should be mentioned, right? Like, here in Lafayette, it's been mentioned to me that the issues with getting people to come back to the games is it's on TV. You don't have to. You can stream it. You don't have to go to the games as if going to a Raging Cajuns game is the same thing about going to the LSU game, right? Traffic and, you know, too many people, whatever. You don't have that problem. Well, this game, Marshall and Virginia Tech, I understand it's power five. And, you know, Virginia Tech, you know, big time program over the last 20, 30 years. Uh, but that game's on TV and that's going to be sold out. No. It's 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 really time for some of these programs, especially the Cajuns coming off a huge win. Everyone's pumped around here for Zeon Chris, I'll tell you that. And so they should hopefully we we get a good crowd uh for the Cajuns on Saturday. All right, let's take a timeout. When we come back, will a couple of teams with big wins, including the Cajuns, have a letdown against lesser competition, allegedly, at least by the point spread, uh this uh weekend. Time to tell you about and I love it. A little fan duel. We're doing pretty well. Although the official numbers went down, went down when I put my results in a spreadsheet. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide-ranging of betting options included spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. A couple of teams that was in the in the Twitter spaces with uh, Scotty Watkins. What is that? The Friday night Sunbelt spaces on Wednesday. So you do have the Cajuns coming off a big win. Uh, over UAB, more about the score than, you know, we're not sure how good UAB is. Uh, but nonetheless, you go on the road and, you, you know, you're up 40 to three with your backup quarterback. You're doing pretty well. A uh, little sloppy at the end. So the coaches have something to complain about. They threw an interception and didn't recover an onside kick. Um, they shouldn't have been passing to begin with. <laughs> that could question that decision uh, with a few minutes left to go. So, uh, I don't think Louisiana is going to have a, a letdown because, well, first of all, they haven't won two in a row this year. They beat Northwestern State, lost to ODU, and then, you know, beat UAB. And next week they're going to Minnesota. So if somehow you lose this one, whereas I don't think Minnesota is all that good, I guess they are defensively, but not really good offensively, which means it may not take a whole lot to win that ball game. Yeah. But you could lose it. Obviously, they won't be favored to win the ball game on the road in Minnesota against Power Five Big Ten team. But Louisiana is averaging 36 points a game. Buffalo is giving up 500 yards a game. I mean, I don't think it's going to be close. It's not a letdown game. Maybe a trap game. That's different. Maybe a little trap game because you're going to Minnesota and looking ahead a little bit. But I would presume not. Again, only their second home game so far in four weeks. In fact, they're only playing two home games in the first five weeks. So. I think they're going to be psyched up. Uh, everyone's excited to see Zian Chris get a start at home, his first collegiate start. The other one that was being talked about was South Alabama, and I'm just not sure why they would have a letdown game. They have only played well for one and a half ball games, and I would tell you they got a little bit too conservative in the third quarter against Oklahoma State. Little um, malaise came over them as they were just killing them because Oklahoma State's bad. They're just not very good right now for whatever reason. And, uh, well, the transfer portal is the reason. I'm sorry. So, I, I can't imagine South Alabama is, are they going to look ahead? Who are they looking ahead to? Who do they got? Well, James Madison. You could look ahead. So, again, a trap game. You could be looking ahead to James Madison. That's for sure. But, you know, the Cajuns are nine and a half point favorites. South Alabama is a 15 point favorite. You can't have a letdown against Central Michigan. Central Michigan also going to play two quarterbacks. Jim McElwain trying to figure out what he's going to do with the Chippewas. but. Again, I, you know, these two teams happen to be the two teams I've covered the last couple of years. I just don't see them having a letdown. If they were 
undefeated, maybe, right? If they were undefeated and the Cajuns were 3-0 and and a 4-0, and now they're undefeated going to Minnesota. If South Alabama was undefeated, they would be probably ranked. And now all of a sudden you got, you know, a team that you got in two touchdowns on and you're going to JMU. Yeah. Then I could see it, but also it should be noted South Alabama beat central Michigan last year. So they're going to be, you know, they're going to know central Michigan is going to want revenge. That kind of is what got the Cajun or the Cajun South Alabama going last year because they went on the road, wasn't quite sure if they were any good. And they went on the road and beat a tough central Michigan team. At least last year was tough. We'll see what about this year. They don't look to be, um, maybe not quite as good or certainly settled on as quarterback. So, uh, it should be a fun week, week four. I think this is the last week of preseason Sunbelt, right? Is everybody, well, I said the Cajuns play in Minnesota, but they've already played their Sunbelt game. Uh, Arkansas State's got Massachusetts. But other than that, it is basically a, it is basically a Sunbelt week uh, in week five. All right. Again, thank you so much. Please continue to sub- subscribe in YouTube. We did set a record for uh, audio downloads. So that was great uh, on uh, on Wednesday. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to have as much as, as much as we did in August. We're going to have more in September, which makes sense because there's football, you know, happening. But still, it's nice to see the numbers kind of steadily climb, even if it's a little bit like, well, like a, a graph, like it goes up and then back down and it goes up and goes back down. And it, but it keeps on going up. So it's fun to see uh, those numbers. Um, and you get to show off a little bit for your bosses. So that's fun as well. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for Locked on Sunbelt. We will recap the Georgia State uh, Coastal Carolina game a little bit on Thursday. We'll have much more of a recap on Friday. And when I say Thursday, I mean Thursday night. We'll do something real quick like uh, for that ball game. We'll have a much more full recap on Friday, and we'll preview the rest of the Sunbelt uh, action as well. Again, I'm Dave Schultz. And you've been listening and watching to Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day.